Hello. Ah. Hey. Hello. Okay. Everybody can hear us. This is great. Uh, well, thank you again, uh, Hernan, for taking the time uh, and uh, join us. Uh, I know there's uh, a lot of points that we want to kind of discuss. It's kind of exciting about uh, having you here on this platform. And uh, especially nowadays, now these conversations could be, uh, you know, in, in its formality of this platform, they also have this kind of uh, uh, kind of friendly conversation. Or you're, you're in your home or office, I'm in my home, and it's more like having coffee with someone, right? So this conversation should be uh, going from the outline of the questions that we have. Uh, it's about kind of understanding your method of thinking and how you see uh, archi architecture in this. Uh, and then going on to, we'll talk about the parametric architecture or what that means or what this kind of platform represents and who takes part in, in, in what ways. Because I feel like this is a larger kind of umbrella, you know, parametric kind of could be everything, but it's also very defined to very specific things. Uh, so, uh, you know, we call the, the questions more like the evolution of post-digital, right? So which what we're trying to do is to understand the last 20, 25 years and knowing your trajectory, it would be great to kind of see where, where that has taken you, where you are and, and all the discussions that have happened before that. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna kind of turn off some of the comments here so we can go ahead and start. Okay, so I'll, I'm gonna go with, uh, with the uh, first two questions I kind of combined, which is, we want to know, can you tell us a bit about yourself, right? But more importantly, what's the reason for becoming an architect? Uh, and has anything remained from the original expectations of what you thought an architect was or a designer was back then? Any of that remain as it is now for you? Um, no, for sure, no. Um, and particularly uh, right now, first with COVID-19 and second with the protest for racial justice and Black Lives Matter, that's going to change again. Uh, and, and we're all going to have to reevaluate everything that we do and we think about it. So, uh, no, I mean, it's, uh, like everything else, it's a work in progress. So, um, originally from Argentina, I, I study and grew up in Rosario, which is the second or third city of the country, depends who you ask. <laughs> um, I became an architect by accident. Uh, I never thought of being an architect. Um, there was a whole series of factors that took me there. Um, so I ended up going to architecture because film school was not available and uh, I was more interested to be a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Actually, I wanted to be a, a doctor for most of my uh, youth, and then I realized I didn't have what it take to be. So my my path to start architecture was very um, uncom. Well, I guess there's not conventional ones. What it was, uh, I it was uh, also when I got into architecture, I didn't fully understand what architecture was neither. I mean, for for us, you know, at least for me. Uh, it was about brick houses with with with, with pin roofs and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. thought an architect was somebody who could make houses and buildings. Uh, I didn't even fully understand the difference between an architect and engineer, to be honest. Um, so it took me a couple of years uh, to understand architecture it was really more like a cultural practice and uh, an art of humanity. So my interest was much more in the art and humanity side of, of, of architecture. And this was brought to people like Saha Hadid and Enrique Mirages and Kamp Himmenblau uh, and others. But that was a kind of awakening that it kind of took me into that trajectory. Uh, was, this, was this happening when you were going to school or after school? Yeah, this, this happened very fast. Um, there was... Um, well, the, the architecture education in, in Argentina, like in the rest of Latin America, is highly technical uh, and is historically very modernist and brutal and very precise. So there was not much room for other mm -hmm. kind of thinking. Um, and then uh, through, through magazines and books, uh, other opportunities started to happen. And then and, and Rick Mirage, was, at that time, was still 
together with Carmen Pinoz, came, came to give a talk, and it, uh, and it was super interesting because mm. even Saha Hadid and Kop Himmenblas and others were of, of an interest to me. Uh, Mirages and Pinoz were, were a way of thinking through concrete and bricks and things that were very familiar to the kind of a much more um, straightforward pragmatism that architecture takes in, in Argentina and Latin America, which is a, is a different kind of context in, in, in the same way that, in, I mean, like a big chunk of our education is, for example, doing a lot of social housing and, and, and keep thinking in that, uh, on that problem. So it was a, a, a and again, the rigidity of the rigor. So in a way, uh, when, I, when I became a student, it still was pretty much uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the middle of postmodernism, and, and there was an interest in, in, in Aldo Rossi and, and, and Tafuri and many other lines of thinking. So, but there was a shift that it was happening by the very peculiar relation between Argentina and Barcelona in which mm. Miraces start to play a role and, and, and the Portuguese architects like Alvaro Sisa. So it, it was an interesting inflection moment and it was also time that there was a group of young architects in Rosario with a different agenda, which it paved the way for me and others to start to think in different terms about these things. Yeah. Um, uh, then I started my own little practice. We did a couple of projects. We built a couple of projects. We did a... We did a renovation for a, for a school with, uh, with kids with mental disabilities, um, which it was related to, uh, to, family, to yeah. personal relationships, mm -hmm. and a couple of stores. And, uh, and then the, there, was a, a, there was this idea of this desire to go and do a master somewhere else to go out. I mean, I, I, I went and lived in Barcelona for a while and worked for Enrique Miralles. Mm. So at that time, I started thinking, um, uh, me and a friend, Marcelo is another oh, yeah. guy, another from Rosario. Uh, he went to Colombia first. Uh, and then I thought that, you know, what he, what, he was, what he was showing me that what he was doing also, Galia San Lomonov, which was also from Rosario. At the end, like we all do, like it's about personal relationships and friendships, you get to know. Yeah, you have to remember this is before internet or anything like that. Everything Correct. goes through little yeah. books or magazines and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, Colombia seems to be like a super interesting place and where they were incorporating computers and all that. Right. Um, so, I went and did my master over there, and, and that kind of it took me in the kind of the path that I've been until now. Nice. Uh, interesting. Um, so from Mirages, then you started thinking I should just go for your master's, went to Colombia, saw what was happening. Yeah. And at this at this moment, Colombia was wasn't this considered. It was considered one of like the kind of mecca, so the technical introduction, introduction of computer and yeah, how that it, changed. Right. It was great. It was, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I was there in 98, 99, which uh, was the, the what is known now as a paperless studio was on the way and mm -hmm. heavily on the way. Uh, and many, many of the young architects like uh, Breguin, Jesse Rice, Hernana Kumimoto, Lisa Couture, Khalil Rashid, and many others yeah. were, were, were working with that. Yeah. Um, so I, I, my interest was at that for many reasons. One it was about what, what was coming and what new, a new way to think about it, but also it was very deliberating in terms of possibility it would allow you to do. Correct. Um, yeah. But also the, the, there was this, um, personally for me, it was an interesting way to start to figure out how I can carve my own, my own language, my own interests, and, mm -hmm. and move away from what, uh, which I was heavily influenced by Mirages. And, uh, and it was kind of in a trap that I didn't know how to figure it out, how to develop my own work. Yeah. Uh, and so the, the computer gave me that possibility. But I, I would say, if you look carefully uh, in the work, I mean, you can see a lot of a lot of mirages there. I mean, mm -hmm. there is still a lot of Enrique Mirages influence, and and, and the work and the, with Carmen Pinoz and later with Benedetta Tagliabue. Um, there's still a lot of that is present in the yeah. work somehow. So I in mean, a way, I, I think you never you you never kind of abandon your interest. You keep adding other layers. Correct. That's that's very interesting because 
I mean, I'm sure everybody as a designer and, and people who look at the work of other people, they, 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 they have a hard time kind of getting away from that uh, exact idea and because they're so attracted to what they're doing, they're still trying to figure that out. So it's interesting that you, you say that because some of the projects I can, I think we can read some of the Mirage's effect or some kind of uh, moments that happen that in a completely transformed way, of course. Um, great, thank you. Uh, so let, let me look at the third question. So going into your work, right? So looking at your work, there's a certain visual quality uh, that is associated with imagery and film. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us the importance of the emotional representation in your projects? And is there a film that kind of captured at some moment, either the 90s, 2000s, that kind of really caught your attention within a film? But more important about your uh, the idea. Yeah, that. I, I, well, I always been more inclined to be on the side of the artistic side of architecture than anything. So I think that emotional and visceral component always has been crucial. Um, I think the film influence is, uh, it was rooted in what I said in my interest in being a filmmaker earlier in, earlier in my youth. Mm -hmm. So in a way, part of the working with animation software was an opportunity to build the brain, the nature of being an architect, a designer, and the, uh, and the aspirations of the desire to be a filmmaker. So it presented that opportunity. I would say there is, uh, in terms of the film, and, and I have to say my interest in recent times are less and less in films, honestly, but mm. it was a big important component at the beginning. Uh, and it still is, I mean, there's still there is a lot of cinematic qualities that I'm interested in, and, and also like there's a sense of literal uh, design part. I mean, like we work with animation software and with camera, okay, that, that's how we, that's the medium, so let's be literal yeah. about it. But it's yeah. never so much about, it. I, I would say, it's, I don't think it's about a particular film, it's about pieces of films or, or the way mm. how the films are constructed, how the techniques are constructed. So, I mean, I, I remember, I mean, when the first Matrix from, from the Wachowski came out, the bullet yeah. time was something that the cop, not my attention, everybody else, or, 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 or or if you think uh, um, Christopher Nolan uh, or, or people like that, or or even like you, you look at the camera world that Spike Lee does in his video or Spike Jones. Mm. Um, so it's more about the techniques and, and the obsession, but usually my, my interests always are much more driven by, um, by pop culture movies. It's not so much outdoor films. It's much mm. more about pop cultures, uh, like Kate, Kate Bigelow, in the hard locker uh, so there are pieces of things that you take here and there but i always much more interesting with with the with the technique like in recent times probably spider-man into the spider-verse was probably one of the most exciting thing i saw in a long time so it blew my mind in terms <laughs> of the aesthetics and all the things they can do but but i have to say in in more recent years uh, it has been way i've been way less influenced by film more influenced by other things and uh, um, so but I think it changed I think in, in different decades you look into different things I think yeah. um, some of the more re re recent Mexican directors like Iñarritu and, mm -hmm. and Alejandro Menavar and others um, but particularly the, 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 their, their photography director Chivo Lewoski um, these are people who are they find a way also to, to reconnect with certain kind of a raw rudeness of, of yeah. the culture and, and mix yeah, it yeah. with technology. And that's probably much more with my interest light these days, is, is, a, is the contamination between the high end of the technology with something much more primitive or, or some kind of a more raw ritualistic make, 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 make thing. Like I've been very ob obsessed in yeah. revisiting a lot of things of butchery and cooking and primitive things of my own, my, my own background in Argentina, but other things that I've been looking around, things that you will find in different cultures that relate to that. And I will say way more than film these days. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, okay, so let me um, go, you know, continue that kind of conversation in film. And I don't, if there's, if this question even applies, it's a, what would be the equivalent of a uh, party within your work, right? And is 
is there is, is there a one party or because you know now people don't really use parties i think it is kind of a more older language i feel like within the work that you do do you have a the equivalent of a party um well i don't know how to answer that question in, in i really think you cannot um i always think that what you do as a designer is, is kind of a, your own genetic code. So whatever, mm. whatever things you learn are along the way with you one way or another. So as I said, my, my bachelor education in Argentina in, in, in the public university was very, very hardcore driven by the ideas of parties and program and Correct. form follow function and all that. So even though I never ever been interested in that as a driving force or it's something mm-hmm. I will never talk about it. I don't think it really defines any so I, I there is some thing will be existing there. So but uh in any case I will say that if there is something equivalent to party uh is much more rooted in the notion of <clears throat> a grammar or an alphabet. Like there, there are certain mechanisms, mm-hmm. certain things that we repeat over time again and again and again, which are not necessarily related to program or to party, but I mean, in many ways, party was something that was used to create a structure and idea of organization. So, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I mean, part, no, I don't think my work has that. Right. I, right. Think, I think, <clears throat> but the, the, there is there is a clarity internally when it comes to it, but it's never really a departing point. It's never, it's never really, uh, it's never really a driving force of the project. Hmm. I will be, I will be lying if I say otherwise. Got it. Um, okay. So then in that case, and the next question would be how important is technique within your work, right? And in parametric design, has the evolution of technique progressed the discourse of your work? Or your discussions? Uh, sure, uh, technique technique is very crucial in the work. Um, it has been fueled by technique, and, and even in, in in the more recent times, where we are looking for contamination or distortion, yeah. that also creates its own techniques of contamination or distortion. So, in, in a way, I'm pretty much uh, pretty much driven by technique, and and I yeah. tend to be and tend to gravitate to work of people that. It's about refinement of the technique. I've ne- I never been so interested in conceptual art uh, or or anything like that. I've always been much more interested in art and musicians or that they rel- rely on virtuosity uh, and technique. So right. it's technique in relation right. to virtuosity. I will not separate that. I mean, yes, there, there is a permanent desire uh, to keep advancing that. Uh, uh, I mean, the... the- I understand the context of the parametric conversation. I, I never consider myself into that um, because I really believe that anything that you do has parameters. So whatever whatever right. you're designing, it is parametric. But I fully understand what it means in the, in, in the, in the culture of design in relation yeah. to technology. Uh, but I've never been a subscriber about that because... Um, um, I, I like to operate in a more free flow way. I, I don't like to be bound for by by kind of imposed rules. Don't get me wrong, techniques and their rules and the work mm-hmm. that you, you we all produce have their own rules. But I like to have the flexibility to change it and, and to don't be defined by that. And I always interested to figure out how you can screw up the techniques and how you can screw up the technology, how the technology can do or make them do things that we're not supposed to do. So in, in any case, I'm much more interested in, in contamination than I'm interested in parametricism. Mm. I mean, I, I agree. I think the technique in, in that conversation, it's your work has always been a, a really refined technique. So, and it takes, I would say, years to get to a point like that. And I feel like if you don't have that kind of virtuoso within what, in the work, it just cannot, it, it doesn't speak as, as loud, I would say. I think- or it becomes of a bit more... Plateau, but, there's this yeah, but I think it can be learned, and I think it can be taught, and and I, and I think it, I really don't think it's difficult to be honest. I think it's just about, um, I think, I it's, think about it's, con- it's it's about consistency. It's about yeah. I- yeah. I- I- embedding yourself in that way to work and keep pushing. I, I but clearly, also- clearly mm-hmm. things are changing, and people are approaching it differently, and there are different things in play. But. Um, I'm, in that sense, I'm fairly old school. I'm, I'm, 
I'm 51 already. I'm, I'm, I'm not a young Turk or a young architect. And, I, I, and also, I, I am not in here about the cutting edge of technology. I mean, I use all the technology available to us, but conceptually, I am not on the cutting edge like other people are. I mean, I think the te technique, like you say, it's, it's easy. You learn it. But the thing is that you can learn it for what reasons, right? So that I think the most difficult part is how to place that kind of conversation yeah. of your work within, the, within a place where it's actually valuable. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd just be learning to know how to do cool things, but they don't belong anywhere, really. Right? But I, I think, think that's, that's always has been the case. I don't think that have nothing to do with computers and technology. I think that always has Correct. been the logic of any, cre any creative work. Mm -hmm. I think technology will allow us to invent it than to add more options how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's say the next one. What are the priorities in your projects in order to engage with your users' emotions? And how would you describe your architecture? And if you have a preferred project or your own, or something that satisfies you one project over the other? Yeah, I never have a project that I really like. I mean, I think every project that we've done, <laughs> I, I kind of hate it right away. Um, most of people who are designers will tell you the same thing so I, I really don't have mm. i don't have projects that i prefer probably there are projects where i think we became closer to what we what we thought um yeah, yeah. at the beginning yeah, um, that's interesting yeah. but usually i i have a very short memory so i tend to be much more uh, in love with things that i'm working right now than things that i done i actually one of the things i find annoying about doing books or or, or doing uh, a little bit sometimes lectures to talk about things that you did 10 or 12 years ago and that you really don't care anymore or you're not invested yeah. in that anymore. Even though I fully understand that for people who are outside the world, they may all look all self-similar and there is a kind of a coherency. So yeah, no, usually I don't have, I mean, usually my, my favorite project is the last one um, because I think is is what is more in line when I'm in, in, interested at the moment. Uh, and, and and now and now I'm trying to 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 figure it out and to rethink a lot of things moving forward. So we'll see what what that will take me. Yeah. Um, the, 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 what, sorry, what was the first part of the question? Ah, uh, it's connected. To that, but it, what what would you, what would be the uh, the priorities that to you want to engage your users? Team. Yeah, uh, I, like the emotions. I say I, that's the part I consider myself much close to art than to architecture. Um, it's no, I'm not so, I'm not so focused when I'm working in whatever will be the interaction with the audience or the emotions of the audience. I, I think, um, I think it will be a little bit or quite arrogant on my part to try to anticipate what people will do. But I, I like the idea of a provocation. I like the idea of discomfort. Mm. I like the idea. Ah. <laughs> that what we do or what or what we do is not easy to read or is not easy to digest. But to be honest, I I, I eat much more um, on the art side. It's a little bit more personal, selfish uh, process in which I'm much more interested in to develop what I'm interested in working on. And then if we get lucky, we'll find an audience, which, by the way, I think for whoever is, is, is watching this, um, it's not that I really find audience that often. It's, it's, I mean, we don't have many clients, or we don't have much, we haven't had much success commercially. So in a way, there is a problem there, and there is a limitation there, and and, and we had to keep thinking about why what are we doing wrong. Um, and I think also in the context of what we're going to right now as a society, um, we're going to have to think also too what what yeah. speculative or progressive design means, how we can align that with. Other, other values of progressive thinking, which I think is one of the, I will say it's, it's a fundamental problem that design have to address um, because yeah. it's usually one or the other, but there are very few few cases that there is that relationship. So um, like everybody else, I, I, I'm in the a, in a, in a, in a process of, of trying to figure it out what to do next with, yeah. with, with no much clarity. But I think it's, 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 it's an exciting it's an exciting proposition to have to reinvent yourself and to reinvent your work yeah. and, and see how you navigate the things. But I think, you do, I don't know, I mean, my sense is I usually work around ideas for two or three years and then I move on into something else without leaving those behind. So yeah. we are right now in a transition process and we, we haven't been that busy in the office for the last year. So 
uh, I has been much more focused in thinking or, or other things and trying to figure it out what, where the next agents of contamination we're interested in and what, how we're going to navigate them. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, uh, let me go to the next question. So, uh, so we would consider you a grandfather of computational design, right? In the in this era, uh, can you tell us about your trajectory within the discipline, right? Uh, since your your start was before the term parametric or yeah uh, the word parametric, right? Uh, how was yeah. uh, how was the digital design classified prior to that? Uh, especially uh, how was it put in the dialogue or how was it put it in an intellectual yeah. setting? Well, as I said, the, the, at the beginning of all this, they were called paperless studio. Um, mm. there, was, there was no such thing as digital architecture or digital thing at that moment. I think that, I think there was blob, blob architecture was a word that was Correct. used a lot at that time. Uh, so everybody was trying to, Build the lexicon and, 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 and the and the manifesto. I, I mean, thank you for the grandfather thing. I don't think that's the case. I think <laughs> that there were people like, uh, as I said, like like people like Reglin or Bernard Cash or Nana Komemoto. Lisa no, of Couture, course. I mean, there uh, are honey. Yeah. No, no, no. But also in terms of how they I just made, feel like within your generation. No, no. I mean, but they made yeah. they made a huge concealed effort to write about it, agreed, to, to do manifesto and so on, which I, I never did. Uh, I, I was never so interested in that. I was much more interested in designing. And so I even to the point that I honestly I never I never been so so fond of, of the word digital architecture or anything like mm -hmm. that because. Well, before that, what was it? Pencil architecture or pencil design? No, I always thought design is design, <laughs> yeah. and I think technology, you keep adding technology and, and to it. Uh, but I understand that there is, there is a pragmatism and, 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 and immediacy that come from the, useful, the usefulness of, of words and yeah. to catalog that. Um, but yeah, I, I think you have different iterations. So the, yeah, there was a paperless architecture, there was a blob architecture, then they became the animation, animated, an animation architecture, software architecture, then digital architecture. And then you start to get a little bit more specific of parametrics yeah. or, or coding, or, or, or now we have artificial intelligence and augmented reality and virtual reality. So the menu, what, what, what do we mean? What yeah. we mean today, design, the digital architecture, or whatever it is, like, I think everything is digital. Like, even, even the people who are working really hard and thinking really hard to produce a, a, an architecture that is not digital, they're using digital tools anyway. So um, mm. in, in a way, everybody is doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's interesting to think the, the, how the conversations were back then, because like you said, uh, you know, the people are trying to find their lexicon, they're trying to, I mean, it, in my view was that it hit the schools, that it hit everywhere, and people are still trying to figure yeah. out how do how do we speak about this, right? Uh, obviously, yep. the first word is blob, and then do you think is there a, probably there was a good blob against a bad blob of what is now? You could have, you know, a, a good project against a bad project using the kind of the same techniques. Uh, so yeah. there was still that conversation happening, which is interesting. Now I think everybody kind of refers to parametric architecture, and I think that's like you said, it's kind of everything, and we just wanted to know. What was that before? You know, but this is a yeah. So let me see. Uh, but I, I think like so everything else, is as, as a, much everybody uh, call it smartphones, iPhones. It's no more than that. <laughs> That's true. Um, so as a as a director at SIAR, right, and then principal at your practice, and as a professor at SIAR, yeah, a professor regardless. So wearing three yeah. hats, right? This is like your daily task. Can you tell us? Yeah about this and specifically, how does this influence your work or vice versa? Do they have similarities to well, these tasks? Uh, you, you, I mean, between teaching and your practice, the, I think the relation is quite symbiotic. Uh, and I think I always been interested in teaching mm. where, where, are we go, where I'm going, not where, where I've been. So there is mm. a more direct correlation what you do as a teacher and what you do as a designer. Uh, so in a way, they they, they fuel each other. I, I I never thought that could be one without the other. Um, 
but I always take it to, for me it was super important that whatever uh, whatever I work with the students was things that I haven't figured it out that there was something to figure it out together um so that has been a pretty symbiotic relationship as a matter of fact a speculative practice like me only only exists because we have the opportunity to teach if not it would not be, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible really uh, that with being a director is is is, is very different I, I i think as a director Fair or foremost, is you have to create a platform for multiple voices and to create a platform for different ideas. Yeah. And it's a very dynamic and it's very organic and it keeps mutating as, as we speak. Uh, again, first with COVID, uh, what, what does it mean for a school and what does it mean, how you change that? And in the last 11 years, in the 11 years, in the last 11 days, but this going for hundreds of years in America uh, with the social injustice for black people, and black voices, and, and and now and now and now we have to respond, and, and we have to listen and shut up and come with actions to change. So this this is gonna is gonna shape, and this is something that it, it keep it keep evolving, it keep changing, and and it's your job and the job of the people that work with you to be proactive and reactive, and to make sure that it's not driven by your own individual uh, uh, in ambition or your own individual ideology or your own. Mm -hmm individual shortcomings or your own individual. So it's a collective effort that is different. Not that teaching is and practice is not a collective effort because you work with the students and, and you work and you work with, with, with the people that work with you. But it's different in, in, in the school and, and particularly in the side when I am. I'm, I'm just the caretaker for a particular period of time in the history of the school. And, and your job is to be um, fully aware of the legacy of the place and, and, and to make the changes that you can do and, and produce uh, uh, and set up the school to be better. As, as I said, I mean, right now, right now, today, I mean, if we have this conversation three weeks ago, it will be different. And we will have it in two wow. months from now, that aspect of the director will be different too. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a much different one. So in, in a way, it's... Um, it's not it's not your own individual desire which they are part mm -hmm. of it but that you're not driven only by that it's a combination of how you try to build um bridges with a much larger community which is 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 incredibly complex and and is is something that usually architects and designers we're not really natural wired to do because usually it's something in the culture of design in the culture of architecture is we tend to be very 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 myopic about mm -hmm. anybody else's work. Yeah. We tend to be interested in our own our own work, and we tend to discard other way of thinking. So that's the challenge, and I think to me that has been uh, the learning curve, and 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 it keep going. And as I said, we are in these extraordinary times of a pandemic mm -hmm. and 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 and, and, uh, and reckoning uh, with Black Lives Matter and all that, and and, mm -hmm. and how that's gonna how that's gonna impact. And what is the responsibility and, and the thing that the school hasn't done and what the school needs to do and, and how that, that so they, 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 they think keep moving. So if, yeah. if there was a huge amount of investment and time in, in to incorporate all the new technologies and so on to keep speculating and to keep thinking in radical terms, how incorporate all these things. Uh, at the end of the day, architects, we are, we are seismographers. We are something that we, we work in relation with, with what, what societies feed us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now we have, all, all, all these voices and all this, this, this noise, uh, this hopeful and radical noise pushing us to do things. So uh, the three things are very different. So to me, teaching yeah. and, and, and designing is much closer uh, to understand. The director is a whole different, it's a different ball game, and uh, and also it's a different ball game when, when it's in a school that is independent. It's just a school of architecture. It's right. not part of the university. So. In a way, you had to make it up, and you had to create the guidance, and, and you are nimble, and you can move faster. But also, sometimes you can move too fast, or sometimes you make decisions. And so, uh, and it's an institution that is is built on on the intellectual cap capacity of the students and the faculty, but it's always a very fragile equilibrium that you had to be able to navigate. So, being in LA, Sayard being in LA, it would be very different if it was somewhere else. Do you agree? 
Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I think that, 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 that would apply to any, any other school. And I think not only being in LA, being, being in downtown LA where we are, yeah. uh, I think Saya has a completely intertwined uh, relation with Los Angeles for good and for bad. I mean, we benefit of yeah. the good things of the city and we, be, uh, and we take the bad things of the city. And so, yeah, it's completely intertwined. I, I mean, Saya, it is an LA place no matter what. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. The next question would be uh, most of all the work associated with the term parametric, right? Uh, it yeah. seems to have a technological notion of performance. Uh, what would be your definition of parametric architecture? Just straight like that in that platform. Uh, and do you think this term would exist without technologies? And if so, how? Uh, again, depends how you want to frame the word parametric. And if you mm -hmm. want to frame it in the way that we understand it uh, 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 as a, almost as a branding, as a way to think through digital technologies, uh, is one thing. If we talk about the fundamental root of the word parametric, it's a different one. I will say any architecture is parametric, as I said earlier, because yeah. everything is defined by parameters. Uh, in the context of the, the, the kind of a more myopic uh, aspect of it, uh, in the, when we talk about technology and so on, right. I think is is the way that people who are really in the of coding and, 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 and um, systems, um, be driven by systems and be driven by rules in which they, 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 the design is, the, outco the outcome as the process of the construction of the outcome is equally the project. Um, that that would be my view of it, um, and that's why I, I never consider myself part of that of, of that way of of, of, of seeing it. Um, but uh, again, in the context that you're asking, yes, I think this has been yeah. driven by technology. I think the work uh, I don't know if we will have the word parametric. We will have another word that relates to parameters. Um, but I, I, I think, like everything else in the, in the culture that we live and the culture of uh, 10 seconds or 15 mm -hmm. seconds, um, once in a while, there are certain phrases of words and they catch, they catch up and they, they stay in the collective. And I think by now, everybody in our field has a very particular, when, when the word parametric comes up, there is a very clear understanding what that means. Um, yeah. and, 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 but... Um, I, I don't know. It's like in more recent years with the triple O ob, ob, object-oriented ontology was something mm -hmm. that also was pretty much into it. Um, I don't know. One, one of my lessons, one of the things I learned from when my, year, my year in Columbia in New York, uh, when 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 there was at the peak of the Les and Guattari and and and, and mm -hmm. the philosophy of of, of uh, stride space and and and. and this is at the end of the 90s, right? At the end of the 90s, yeah. uh, which I was very interested in. and um, It took me a long time to figure it out. I, I really was, was not interested in those things. So I was, I was not interested <laughs> in to be defined or to define my work in any sense of, uh, in, in, any sense of, of constraints or, 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 or to be classified in any way or shape or form. But um, I, I, I'm not trying to be dismissive. I'm not trying to say that people who are invested in that or the people who really see that as a pattern or as a way to work, that is not yeah. valid. I think every way of working is valid. I think every way, every way to think about it is valid. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. It's not really what I would consider my, what my interests align with. I mean, I think it would be more of a post-conceptualizing what you're doing, right, in a way, because you're trying to kind of put it in a specific area just to kind of, I'm much more image driven, so I have a very clear vision about what I want to get, and then I use whatever method and technology yeah. is available to me to yeah, get there. Yeah. I'm not driven. I mean, of course, we have a process and a methodology, yeah. but I I'm not driven by that. I'm not bound by that. I'm much more bound by the, visual the image of, of it. It's the image of the, right. uh, the is, for me, it's image of the vehicle for the production of form. Yeah, so kind of that emotional that you can't really put it in words right away. It's more like you see it and it's like, okay. Yeah, but yeah. you have to work through it. And then the method and the technology is super important. But I, yeah. I, 
I, I and don't get me wrong, there is a lot of acceptance of the randomness uh, and the deviation that it will happen along that process, and then you will find yeah. things along the way that you appropriate. That's why I think technique is super important to anchor it. Correct. Uh, but I, I usually don't. I don't start with the technique. I usually start <laughs> with the. It, it's about image production and clarity mm. of that. Uh, and I know how disappointing that may be for some of the people in the audience because <laughs> I'm fully yeah. aware of the level of, of, of arbitrary perception that my work engenders. <laughs> and I'm very comfortable with that. I have no problem with it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, the next question would be, you know, SciArc is considered an um, institution in the forefront of technology, uh, design advances. What are yeah. the fundamental traits? What would be the fundamental traits you would expect to see an architecture student come out from there. What would be something that you would want that student, well, a trait to have? I think the first, the first thing, if you want to be really in the cutting edge of technology, is to don't make a big deal out of it. Just have it and incorporate mm -hmm. it and make it part of a seamless curriculum. So what, 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 what you want from your students, and again, things are changing again, so... If we talk about this in six months, I will tell you a different version of how we're going to incorporate other things that I think the whole technological argument hasn't incorporated uh, with, in relation, again, to, to the issues that we are confronted right now with social injustice and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be an interesting challenge, how to incorporate that, how you add layers Got to it. what you think is your own natural tendency and your natural capacity. Um, but... I think in terms of that, what you want from your students is that they became their own individual thinkers, their own individual designers, in which technology is, is a platform. And, and, and of course, it's not devoid of ideological components, it's not devoid from ethical and moral dilemmas. Yeah. But ultimately, what you want then is to understand that there's a lot of versatility and there's a lot of technology available. And the technology, by the way, it will become obsolete. It comes obsolete year by year. So whatever technology you think you're learning and you're mastering, it will be replaced or it will be evolved. So at the end of the day, it's going to be in, in the roots of how you um, how your intellectual capacity to understand your design Correct. agenda in relation yeah. to that technology. Because again, in, your edu in the time that you're in the education period in your life, it's only a, a, a very particular piece of time. Like if, when I look back in 98, 99, when I was working, uh, I mean, that it was technology since infancy. Um, mm -hmm. But in many ways, many of my interests remain the same. And what I was interested in 20 years ago, many of them are still interested in and just using yeah. different technology. So right. I think to me, the first rule about technology is, is, is really about don't, don't make a big deal out of it. Don't do not... Do not talk about those terms. Uh, accepted as part of the natural progression of design and the natural progression of architecture, which always has been uh, attached to technology. I mean, yeah. the reason what, what you have um, the aqueduct of Segovia, or, or, or you have the, the big wall in China, or, or, or you have uh, a, a, the, the courting wall skyscraper, was always driven by the evolution of technology, material. Yeah. Uh, mathematical calculation or other one. It, it was just a different kind of technology, but it, it's not really that new. And I, and I don't think we should be so bound by it, even though I, I, I love computers and software. I'm obsessed with it. I mm -hmm. always like to see what's new, what, what else you can incorporate. But because I'm obsessed how we expand the palette of options of what we can do, not to be bound by it or not to have like, a, not to belong to a club or not to belong to a team. Yeah. So in other words, the technique, the technology, it should be a given, right? These are the tools that you have at that particular moment and then use those to the advantage of yeah. your thinking. Yeah, I mean, as I said, you, yeah. you, you wouldn't have the son of Jimi Hendrix without guitar, electric guitar and mobile pedal. And you would not have, uh, mm -hmm. have hip hop and electronic music without computing and sampling. Sure, I mean, that, that, it's always an association between creativity and technology yeah. and energy and time. And you don't have uh, uh, Mozart without the Stradivarius instruments. So, yeah, uh, that, that yeah. partnership, it, ne it, never, it never goes it's, away. Right, right. Um, okay, so going forward with that discussion, can you tell us a bit about your philosophy of teaching? And how would you categorize your teaching approach different than others? Uh, 
I guess it has it has evolved over the years. Has been the same. You know. Well, I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I I will say like every young young professor, I started teaching very driven by 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 boundaries and and technique and to produce only small variations of it. And as I get older and I keep teaching more, I, I, I try to incorporate more and more the surprise factor in which the, the students can navigate more latitude on their end and I want to be surprised. But my philosophy of yeah. teaching is, is, is basically about, I mean, it's very simple. It's about aesthetics and form and form and, and how you navigate through the technique, how to achieve your ambitions in relation to that. And um, at the same time, very much um, obsessed with the idea of, of, of counterintuitiveness. Like if you want to work on beauty, probably we start looking at things that are ugly and disturbing. So you try to reverse engineer to see if you can create something original. <laughs> now, I, I fully understanding that originality is not truly possible in architecture, but I think that's part of the goal. So I, I, I think my philosophy of teaching is also based on the idea that I want to teach and explore things that I do not know and I'm not certain about it, that I have a certain clarity mm -hmm. about that this could be a good addition and a good contribution. Um, I like to teach what I call in a non-critical way in the sense, not that I'm not critical with students, but not in the idea that I, I like instead to be more about this is what architecture did wrong or architecture is not doing. I'm much more interested to say, okay, this is what architecture has done or with yeah. our genre, this is what we've done, this is how we can contribute and keep adding. And many times it's triggered by very banal things. I'm, 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 I'm a big fan of very simple, um, banal ideas that can become complex processes. So I, I, I've never mm. been so much into, into the notion of the big idea. Uh, I always been much more interested in the very simple observation and understanding of things and then how you navigate to that. But again, I think it's evolving and, uh, and it's going to keep evolving and uh, we have to. I think there is a whole, yeah. a, a whole, a whole other repertoire of things that we can keep adding. Um, also, I, I, it goes up and down. I mean, there are certain moments I want to go back and, and the studios that are much more rooted in, in, in kind of what we call disciplinar elements. And there are moments I want to liberate myself and, and, and all of us from that. Like the, the last studio I did in Saya was, com was called Not Making Architecture. So we're basically, we're trying to avoid any cliche of, of architecture, Anglo-Saxon lexicon. And we were trying to yeah. liberate from all of that and look at everything else that we can do out it and produce proto-architecture that didn't have any specific sense of utility or any specific sense of function. Um, we didn't we didn't fully succeed because we are uh, we are architects and sooner or later we go back to those traps. Uh, but that's somewhere what, what, what I will say there yeah. is such thing as a philosophy of teaching. Yeah, because I uh, the reason we ask is because I know that some of the works that that come out of your studio, you know, I, I, I'm very familiar. There's a lot of people who are very familiar, but there's people who look at it and they have no idea what that is, where it came from. Yeah. They like it and they don't know how to kind of respond it's more like you like it but you don't know why which is actually super interesting you yeah know? And that's one of the, the one of the that's why we i ask you this question because a lot of people who see it and they don't relate you know they they they, they have to have well, a certain to be, that. To, to be fair we don't always know the why i mean i mean the why yeah. will come maybe later sometimes so it's not um, it's, it's not always about certainty it's, it's more about liberate yourself from preconditions and see how you can keep yeah. pushing. Mm -hmm. uh, so going into the idea of, you know, evolution within the, how it changes, you know, so now with the conversation of COVID-19, right? How, yeah. does this pan how does this pandemic affected working, your working methods specifically, uh, or CyArx or the office? How, how, does, how has this changed for you? Yeah, my my personal working method has method hasn't changed that much because being in Sayak and traveling and so on, I've been working remotely for a long time with my office, mm -hmm. and also my office is tiny. It's just me and another person right now, so it's not that difficult to navigate. And and again, we are not that busy. I think we have only one project that we're working right now, mm -hmm. uh, so it hasn't changed much. Um, 
I think the school, it forced the school to change and to really embed ourselves in remote learning and remote teaching. And it happens um, when we were nine weeks into the semester. So it forced us to do it very fast. Yeah. Uh, and I think overall, the school did fairly well. Um, I, I think what you were saying about the technology, about the school, I think it produced a fairly natural fit for it. Um, clearly, it cannot replace the human interaction and the, mm -hmm. and the social component of, 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 of being in the school and the people talking to each other. But in terms of the work, um, I, 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 I think, again, in the office work, my, my, in my teaching also actually um, it, it gave me more time to teach I mean because we have Zoom and all that so personally yeah. I, I did uh, I spent I spent more time that than maybe a regular semester would allow um, mm -hmm. so there was an interesting series of conversation and I think in a way for me I, I, I again I'm very I very tuned into technology I like screens I, I we don't make physical models or anything near in the studio or in my office yeah, so so I've always perfect, been yeah. very, very tuned with the screen. So to me, to talk to the, through the screen and communicate through the screen, uh, it came natural. Also came from years of teaching and visiting professorships that I, I've been using the remote tool for a while. So uh, as a director, it's a whole different, it's a whole different issue because we, we have to navigate the, the, the fast transition and we have to navigate infrastructure that we are working and creating for what the COVID-19 crisis is not any time to yeah. be over. So we, like every other school, we're trying, we're trying to navigate the, what I call the phase that we're going to go into hybrid model with partial teaching in person and still other remote learning. So yeah. we are looking what are the, we are working right now, what is the best version to do that. Um, but I think, in a way, it forced you to go back to the basics, which is about the intellectual capital of the conversation between the, the faculty and the students and the students and the faculty. Mm -hmm. And so, in a way, it makes the technology a little bit neutral in terms of certain aspects, but it exacerbates it into another one. So, I think certain, certain studios and certain group of students with faculty that they were working more in what, what, what many faculty in the school, Peter Test and David Weiser called the, the digital intersection between the digital and the physical work. It has to go fully <laughs> digital because the medium of it. So it has been a lot of, a lot of ideas to it. Um, but yeah. I think that also is an interesting challenge. And I think uh, architects, we, I mean, Architecture is, is, is a, I mean, an architect is, is a super complicated profession, no matter what. So this, this, is, this is just um, another step on the staircase yeah. of con complexity, which is to be an architect and to be always, I, I think architecture is always in a state of crisis and architects were always in a state of crisis. Uh, <laughs> this, this crisis right now is taking a different version. Yeah. Uh, how how would you, we, have, we have to incorporate it. Yeah, how would we you think that, yeah, how would you think the the profession or the idea of an architect becomes with this pandemic. Like, I mean, everybody, I feel like they have to get used to meetings online with yeah. you know, 20 people, right? And then meetings with consultants. Yeah. And it became the new norm, how they say. And is that, well, how does that change? You know, One thing we know with this kind of things of technology and so on is when changes come, when changes happen, they, they usually tend to stay, you know, like, after 9-11, we changed the window we traveled and you will not travel. Yeah. And, and we never went back to that. And yeah. this is going to be the same. Are we going to be all the time in Zoom? No, but Zoom or whatever platforms or the, like Instagram Live or whatever, they're going to become yeah. much more part of what we do. And then there is Completely a conveniency. Agreed. And I think we are evaluating what is efficient, what works and what doesn't work and what, what we're going to incorporate. Um, I don't know. I mean, talking about the slogans like parametrics, I mean, I mean we, I, I've been personally, and I think, so, Saya, we've been uh, talking a little bit for this idea of architectural thinking. I, I think the world of architecture and, and architects, we, we have the capacity to operate in other things and just making buildings. So I think the, 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 after this pandemic, uh, first of all, I don't think we're going to go back to normal also what it means. Because again, at least in the context of, of America, we have the pandemic. But also we, yeah. we, we have the, the light black matter change that is gonna gener Correct. generate a massive Correct. change in the country. I hopefully hope that changes. And hopefully yeah, exactly. and it's sustainable yeah. and we have to um, we have to commit to that. So I mean
If they go back to normal, forget about it. What, what was the normal thing? So we're not going to do that. Specifically with the issue of COVID and these platforms, I think it's going to be a massive, um, a massive readjustment, but also yeah. not just in the way that we communicate. I think how we diversify the interest of what an architect can do and what other, what other kind of models of profession we can develop out of this. And I, and I think that to mm. me is exciting. Um, there is yeah. something really scary about all these changes but it's also something incredibly exciting when when you know that you're in the presence of something that has historic proportions. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's yeah, just going to be about the profession of meetings and so on. I think it's going to completely yeah. change also what it means uh, being an architect and what, what architecture means and what architecture could be, could, could also be and move forward with it. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, I like what you say about um, the new models of uh, of work. It could be a different, you know, it, it's a ramification of we understanding these platforms and what kind of new ways of making that and that becoming a normal, right? Which is, I, I like the idea of that. Um, so yeah. similar within that conversation, uh, um, how do you think current technologies, you know, computational tools, uh, AI, robots, it, a lot of these things that Cyarc promotes and he has uh, been at the forefront um how does how do you think the the construction processes will change or how would that affect in the coming years if you have an idea about it well, or is is there clearly is there the construction process had, yeah well I, I for sure i mean i i think we already are in the ai yeah. era if we are with by we go by slogans yeah um so uh I mean, the, the construction industry hasn't changed as fast as, as the design industry. I think technology yeah. has been much more impactful in design than it has been in construction. Hopefully, we will start to catch up. And I think the, the, the pandemic also will produce changes on that front too. Um, but also, we, I, I, again, in, in parallel to, 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 this, to the social changes that they have to come, we will see also the balance between the human, the human and the technology. I think that also is going to have to be revisited. Um, but for sure, our intelligence will be a component and it will create a component of efficiency when it comes to fabrication and assembly and material. But also it's going to be, become a really useful tool in terms of design. I mean, you're going to have the capacity, like if you're working in, in, in social housing, you, you will be able to fed AI, I mean, if you want, you can fed up pretty much every every plan and every section done in social housing and, and work with AI, artificial intelligence to find the most efficient way yeah. to do the best unit. So I think it's not going to be changed about modes of production in terms of fabrication. So one, I think it's going to change the way that we design. Yeah. And, and, and that I mean, could be exciting and also it could be terrifying. Yeah. Would you, would you the, think that... The, the level of replacement and, and how we're going to navigate that. So, but at the same time, the, the good news is architecture is always is, is always the elephant in the, in the family of, of, of in, in the in the jungle. It's always the slowest one, and anyway, it's smart. <laughs> uh, and 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 but That's also we are expressing being generalists. <laughs> so in a way, we we don't yeah. have and we don't and we can't and we don't move to the speed of technology. In, in that happens in other things. Yeah. So in a way, we always have a little bit more time to reflect. And we have a little bit more time to figure it out. What are how we how we how we can assimilate that? Um, and would you think that any of these technologies, or in this kind of discussion, would there be a post parametric in your view? And you know, what would that mean? Like, I because think, as I said, you know, I think we are already in post parametric. I think we are this. in. The, I think we are in multiple platforms. I think we are in the multiple. Yeah series of techniques and methodology. I don't think we are, on, and we haven't been in a long time on, on a singular, clear, defined uh, methodology slash ideology to work. Um, yeah. So I think we are much more, if anything, if, 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 if I have to come with the definition, I would be that we are in the culture of sampling and paraphrasing mm. music. I think we are much more in sampling. sampling. Yeah, Got you it. use many things yeah, yeah. and you use multiple platforms, multiple software, multiple concepts. And you sample and recombine them. So, I, I, I really, I really, I, I think we are past the idea of, of, of a singular coherency. Mm. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll go to the last question. Um, yeah. So, as a figure in academia, right, and a professor of architectural thinking, 
you're fundamentally an influencer. This is an Instagram term. I don't know if you've heard this. Yeah. So I would say that you are a, an influencer, you know, influencing at least two, two uh, generations of digital architects, whatever. Uh, what kind of advice would you would you like to give to a young architect that really has no a, a, a potential architecture student, someone who yeah. gets into the idea of architecture, starts to understand what that is, probably still has the idea that if you see, like you said at the beginning on your conversation, that you see houses, pitch roofs, and all this, is that architecture? Yeah. If well, you had to speak to somebody like that, yeah, what would uh, be that? You know, how would you influence them? Well, for, first of all, is I will say, uh, trust who you are and try. Do not deny who you are. Do not deny what you like. Uh, look, 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 look in comfort about the, the instincts, about the things that you like. Um, sometimes we tend to over, uh, we tend to make things very common. We talk about the things, but many of us, at the end of the day, what you do as a designer is based on a biological, a biological individual evolution about the things that form you and you think that you like since you were a kid, all the way yeah. to the moment that you choose to do something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, first of all, allow that to be part of your decision. Allow that to be part of, of, of that. So, which is basically what I'm saying. Understand who you are yeah. and, 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 and develop your own version. I mean, uh, architecture is one architect at a time. Um, it's one of the most complex disciplines because it's completely subjective. Um, it's, yeah. it's very difficult to, to define what it means for everybody. So, e each of us have a different. I mean, there um, the, the, there is this this student in Innsbruck who did this series of videos asking a lot of architects what is architecture. And they're like yeah, 350. Yeah. They're like mm -hmm. 350. Uh, it's not that uh, any of the answers are different. It's like they're, they're not two answers that even close. They are completely yeah. uh, from the whole spectrum what it, what it is. So the, I, I, I think my advice is simple. I mean, uh, trust who you are, trust your own background, trust your own culture, trust your own desires, uh, and then choose to study in a school that I think is close to represent that, to represent those values and challenge those values. And, and then carve, carve, your, own, carve your, own, your own path within that and, and build a healthy um, trust, mistrust of what you've been taught. I mean, mm. like you have to trust a little bit, yeah. uh, and you have to mistrust it a little bit. Uh, so, so it's the best way to find your own voice. So uh, yeah. grab and learn what you think you don't have, and of course, you, of course, you have to you have to learn the craft and you have to learn the ABC about being an architect, but. Yeah. That that is it can be acquired. That is easy. I mean, I, I'm absolutely convinced that anybody can become an architect and anybody can become a really good architect. Really? I, 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 I do. I, I, really, really? I really think it's about, yeah. it's about commitment uh, and about willing mm. to go through the motions to do it again and again and again. I, I, I really think it's one of the creative disciplines that has, it can be learned, uh, it can be learned, it can be learned. I, I, I really think, I mean, if you look at some of the great architects of our time or any time, they're completely different. Some of them are extraordinarily virtuosos and, and they're really, they do a sketch and that's it. There's yeah. other ones that they have to work through 400 iterations. Some of them don't even know how to draw. Some of them don't know how to touch a computer. Sure. Um, so, and that doesn't stop you. So it, it's really, it's about the clarity about what do you think architecture is? What do you think architecture yeah. can contribute? And be willing to be coherent, um, which is not an easy thing. I mean, um, the, the, there is always a problem of profession on it, which I I, yeah. I, I never be so invested into it. Um, so, and, and, and by by choice or not, I always choose to float around that and don't really fully engage. But if you really fully engage with that, it, it, it's tough. It's not easy. Uh, but but I think it's about building your own convictions. I think the idea of clarity is important because even as you go into the archi into architecture school, uh, that clarity takes a while. You know, some people might take them longer than others, and I think that's what would be the importance yep. of you know, that kind of education. Um, it is it, it is a slow process, but at the same time, mm -hmm. don't be patient. I mean, the patience is an overrated bill too. <laughs> That's actually so you. You can start advice. very fast. 
Yeah. You can start um, fast and you can do changes fast. Um, okay. Well, I think that that concludes everything. Uh, you know, I really appreciate Anand that you could join us. I think it's amazing to hear your trajectory. I don't think we get to hear you like this in such a kind of, uh, you know, one-to-one -one discussion, you know, very, it's like a conversation between two people, which is great. Um, and, yeah, uh, thank you, it was fun. Um, okay, so hope your family well, be well and take care. Thank you, <laughs> same changing. to you. <laughs> Bye. Take care.